The History of Cameras Hello everyone. This is 3Z. Don't forget subscribe. Even before photography was invented, cameras had a long history. From the camera obscura, through numerous iterations of photographic technology, including daguerreotypes, calotypes, dry plates, and film, cameras have progressed to the digital cameras and camera phones of the present era. The camera obscura served as the predecessor to the photographic camera. The natural optical phenomenon known as a camera obscura, Latin for darkroom, occurs when an image of a scene on the other side of a screen, or, for example, a wall, is projected through a small hole in that screen and creates an upside-down, left-to-right image on a surface directly across from the opening. The account of the Han Chinese philosopher Mozi is the earliest documented instance of this idea, c. 470 to c. 391 BC. Mosey was right when he claimed that the camera obscura image is inverted because light emanates from its source in straight lines. Ibn al-Haytham, al hazan an Arab physicist, experimented with light passing through a small hole in a darkened room in some of his highly significant writings on optics written in the 11th century. The earliest known instance of using a lens to project images into a darkened room through a wall opening or closed window shutter dates to around 1550. Portable camera obscura equipment in tents and boxes has been used as a drawing aid since the late 17th century. The only method to retain the images captured by these cameras before the development of photography processes was to manually trace them. The first cameras were large enough to fit one or more persons inside, and they eventually became smaller and smaller models. Portable box camera obscuri that were appropriate for photography were widely accessible by the time of Neeps. Johann Zahn envisioned the first camera in 1685 that was portable and tiny enough to be used for photography, but it would be nearly 150 years before such an application was feasible. In his highly famous essays on the camera obscura, the Arab physicist Ibn al-Haytham, c. 965 to 1040 AD, commonly known as al hazan described experiments with light passing through a small opening in a darkened space. The work of Ibn al-Haytham, who is credited with creating the pinhole camera, has been used to trace the origins of the camera. Ibn al-Haytham was the first to use a screen in a dark room to project an image from one side of a hole in the surface onto a screen on the other side. While the effects of a single light passing through a pinhole had been described earlier, Ibn al-Haytham provided the first accurate analysis of the camera obscura, including the first geometrical and quantitative descriptions of the phenomenon. He also conducted the earliest afterimage studies and was the one who first understood the connection between the pinhole and the focus point. Through Latin translations, Ibn al-Studies Hatem's on optics had a significant impact on Europe and influenced thinkers including Whittelow, John Peckham, Roger Bacon, Leonardo da Vinci, René Descartes, and Johannes Kepler. Since at least 1550, camera obscura were utilized as drawing aids. Portable camera obscura systems in boxes and tents have been utilized as sketching aids since the late 17th century. Ancient Photographic Camera, 18th to 19th Centuries it was well known for hundreds of years before the invention of the photography camera that some materials, like silver salts, darkened when exposed to sunshine. Johann Heinrich Schulz, a German chemist, showed through a series of experiments that the darkening of the salts was solely caused by light and was unaffected by heat or exposure to air. Carl Wilhelm Scheele, a Swedish chemist, demonstrated in 1777 that silver chloride was particularly prone to darkening from exposure to light and that, once darkened, it was insoluble in an ammonia solution. Thomas Wedgwood was the first to use this chemical to produce images. Wedgwood arranged objects, such as leaves and insect wings, on clay pots covered with silver nitrate, then exposed the arrangement to light to produce images. However, because Wedgwood didn't use a fastening technique, these images weren't irreversible. In the end, he was unable to achieve his objective of employing the method to produce stable images made by a camera obscura. Using a sliding wooden box camera constructed by Charles and Vincent Chevalier in Paris, Joseph Nicefort Niepce took the first ever permanent photograph of a camera image in 1825. 
Since 1816, Meeps had been working with methods for correcting camera obscura photographs. The scene from Meeps' window is captured in the snapshot he was able to take. It was created using a bitumen coated pewter surface exposed for 8 hours. 10. 9. Meeps referred to his method as heliography. Meeps communicated with Louis Jacques Mande Daguerre, the inventor, and the two formed a collaboration to advance the heliographic technique. To enhance contrast in his heliographs, Niepce had conducted further chemical experiments. The collaboration came to an end with Niepce's death in 1833, however Daguerre made improvements to the camera obscura design. By developing an image on a plate covered in silver iodide and then exposing this plate once more to mercury vapor, Daguerre was able to create a photograph with a high contrast and razor-sharp detail. By 1837, he had developed a common salt solution to correct the photographs. He attempted to sell this technique for a few years under the name Daguerreotype. Eventually, the French government acquired Daguerre's method for public dissemination with the assistance of scientist and politician Francois Arago. In return, Daguerre and Isidore Niepce, Niepce's son, received pensions. A method to take pictures with a camera using silver salts was separately developed in the 1830s by the English scientist William Henry Fox Talbot. Despite being disappointed that Daguerre had announced photography before him, on January 31, 1839, he presented a pamphlet to the Royal Institution titled Some Account of the Art of Photogenic Drawing, the first description of photography to be published. Within two years, Talbot created a two-step method he dubbed calotypes for making images on paper. Negative printing, which reverses all values in the reproduction process so that black appears as white and vice versa, was initially used in the calotype process. The original negative can theoretically be used to create an infinite number of positive prints thanks to negative printing. The calotype method also made it possible for a printmaker to modify the final image by editing the negative. Daguerreotypes generated crisper details, which is largely why they were more widely used and more popular than calotypes. Daguerreotypes can only create a direct positive print, hence copies cannot be made. The two-step negative slash positive technique served as the foundation for contemporary photography. Early still photos. Nice for Niepce used a very small camera he manufactured himself and a piece of paper coated with silver chloride, which darkened where it was exposed to light, to capture the first imperfect photograph of a camera image in about 1816. Niepce was unaware of a way to remove the remaining unaffected silver chloride, therefore the image was not permanent and eventually turned completely dark due to the exposure to light required to examine it. In the middle of the 1820s, Niepce experimented with photography on surfaces thinly covered with bitumen of Judea using a sliding wooden box camera constructed by Parisian opticians Charles and Vincent Chevalier. In the brightest parts of the image, the bitumen gradually hardened. Then, the bitumen that hadn't yet hardened was eliminated. One of those photos has been preserved. Calotypes and Daguerreotypes Niepce's associate Louis Daguerre continued to experiment after his death in 1833 and by 1837 had developed the first useful photographic technique, which he called the daguerreotype and made public in 1839. Iodine vapor was used by Daguerre to cover a copper sheet that had been silver-plated with a layer of light-sensitive silver iodide. Following exposure in the camera, the image was fixed with a strong solution of table salt and developed using mercury vapor, sodium chloride. In 1840, Henry Fox Talbot developed the calotype, a distinct technique. Both methods, as they were commercialized, employed very basic cameras made up of two nested boxes. The ground glass screen in the rear box could slide in and out to change the focus. After focusing, the lens was capped and the ground glass was replaced with a light tight holder holding the sensitized plate or paper. The photographer then uncapped the lens, opened the front cover of the holder, and waited for as many minutes the lighting seemed to dictate before putting the cap back on and shutting the holder. Despite the mechanical ease, excellent achromatic lenses were the norm. Dry trays. Desire van Munkhoven's work had made collodion dry plates available since 1857, but it wasn't until Richard Leach Maddox's creation of the gelatin dry plate in 1871 that the wet plate process could be equaled in terms of quality and efficiency. 
so-called instantaneous snapshot exposures were ultimately made feasible by the 1878 discovery that heat brightening a gelatin emulsion significantly boosted its sensitivity. A tripod or other form of support was no longer absolutely necessary. A compact camera could be held in one hand while taking the picture in daylight with a quick plate or film. The number of amateur photographers increased and candid informal portraits gained popularity. There were many different types of cameras, including single and twin lens reflexes, big, unwieldy field cameras, straightforward box cameras, and even detective cameras that were concealed in things like pocket watches, hats, or other items. Short exposure times, which enabled candid photography, also made the mechanical shutter a necessary advancement. Although built-in shutters were typical by the end of the 19th century, the first shutters were standalone accessories. Thirty-five millimeters. Between 1905 and 1913, a number of producers began producing 35 millimeters film for still photography. The Tourist Multiple and Simplex, which were first made publicly available and saw large sales in 1913 and 1914, respectively, were 35 millimeters cameras. Oscar Barnack, who oversaw research and development at Lates, made the decision to look into using 35 millimeters cine film for still cameras while aiming to construct a small camera that could produce excellent enlargements. He created the UR Leica, a 35 millimeters camera prototype, circa 1913, but World War I put a hold on further advancement for a number of years. Leica didn't release their first 35 millimeters cameras for sale until after World War I. Between 1923 and 1924, Leitz test marketed the design and received enough favorable feedback for the camera to go into production as the Leica I for Leitz camera in 1925. The Kanta, introduced in 1932, was the most notable opponent that the Leica immediately attracted, and its success helped establish 35mm as the preferred format for high-end compact cameras. With the Retina I, which introduced the 135 cartridge used in all contemporary 35mm cameras, Kodak entered the market. Although the Retina was reasonably priced, roll film remained the format of choice for mass market cameras, and 35mm cameras were still out of most people's price range. This changed in 1936 when the affordable Argus A was released, and it altered significantly in 1939 when the wildly successful Argus C3 was released. By the time the C3 was retired in 1966, 35mm film had taken over the market, even though the cheapest cameras were still using roll film. With the 1936 release of the Canon 35mm rangefinder, an upgraded version of the 1933 Quantum prototype, the nascent Japanese camera industry saw its first real growth. After Korean War veterans and soldiers stationed in Japan brought them back to the United States and other countries, Japanese cameras would start to gain popularity in the West. DSLRs, Digital, DSLRs since the mid-1980s, Nikon has been interested in digital photography. And functioning prototype of the first SLR-type digital camera, still video camera, made by Panasonic, was unveiled by Nikon in 1986 at a presentation at Photokina. A sensor with a two-thirds charge coupled device and 300,000 pixels served as the foundation for the Nikon SVC. Depending on the definition, the camera's magnetic floppy storage medium can save 25 or 50 BNW pictures. The Nikon QV1000C, the first commercial DSLR camera, was introduced in 1988. The first in a long line of professional Kodak DCS SLR cameras that were partly based on film bodies, frequently Nikons, was the Kodak DCS, Kodak Digital Camera System, which Kodak introduced to the market in 1991. Priced at $13,000, about $26,000 in 2021, it had a 1.3 megapixel sensor, a large external digital storage system, and it had these features. The Kodak DCS was renamed Kodak DCS 100 upon the launch of the Kodak DCS 200. The development of the first JPEG and MPEG standards in 1988 
which enabled picture and video files to be compressed for storage, aided the transition to digital formats. The Casio QV10, created in 1995 by a team under the direction of Hiroyuki Sutaka, was the first consumer camera with a liquid crystal display on the rear. The Kodak DC25 was the first camera to support compact flash in 1996. The Ricoh RDC1 camera from 1995 may have been the first to allow users to capture short video clips. A splitter and three separate CCDs were added to the Minolta 500 SI SLR to create the RD175, which was debuted by Minolta in 1995. Together, they produced 1.75M pixels. The advantage of employing an SLR base was that any existing Minolta AF mount lens could be used. The Nikon D1, which had 2.74 megapixels and cost less than $6,000, about $10,700 in 2021, was introduced in 1999. It was the first digital SLR designed totally from the ground up by a major manufacturer. Professional photographers and high-end consumers could buy it. Additionally, this camera was compatible with Nikon F-mount lenses, allowing film photographers to use many of their existing lenses. Sales of digital cameras increased significantly as a result of technological advancements. Compact digital still cameras, bridge cameras, mirrorless compacts, and digital SLRs are some of the different categories that make up the digital market. Since 2003, digital cameras have outsold film cameras. Kodak declared in January 2004 that it would stop selling Kodak-branded film cameras in the developed world. After struggling to adjust to the changing industry, Kodak filed for bankruptcy in 2012.